Talking now. Talking Make sure they now. are not Thank muted. You. Can you Hold hear on. us now? Can Test, you hear testing, us? Testing. Oh, yes. We, yes. They can hear us now. I can hear Wait, you. is that an okay as you, you can hear us or an okay to the fact that we're working on it? No, I, I can hear it. Yeah, they oh, can hear oh, us. Oh, I can hear it now, too. Yep, cool, cool. Thank All you right. so much, John, for pointing that out. I had not bothered to check. That. That's not bothered to very highly appreciated. Um, yeah. Okay, was it like that the whole time or very recently? Because if it was the whole time, we've got to rewind for some bits. All right. Yeah, I like all of it. Yeah, basically the whole bit. All right, whole bit. Okay, the whole bit. Thank you so much. I don't know if that's Murax, um, if Murax is John, but regardless, whoever said it, thank you so much. Um, yeah, okay. We had no idea. No, we did not. Because I mine's on mute, so I wouldn't have. Yeah, so is mine. Right? So okay. Likewise. Well, uh, then we're gonna say hello way Hi. back from the beginning. Hi. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you for being here. Uh, hi, everybody. Hi. We are. S I'm hi. so sorry that nobody could hear things. You have ears now. That's great to hear, James. I'm Fantastic. so happy to hear that. Uh, to hear that. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um. So. Well, what you just popped in on was um the party coming together. Uh, and I'm going to give you a little bit of what you have for context, and I'm going to rewind straight to the beginning and go through and inter introduce everybody and their characters again. Uh, so what you just popped in on was the beginnings of a small alliance forming to f mm, solve a problem that they don't know quite what it is yet. Great jokes were made. Oh, darn. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. Uh, I'm glad to hear it. Yeah, I'm glad to hear anything, actually. Uh, uh. So... That's what's happening. We're going to give you the whole rundown here in just a minute. But first, we're going to pass the introduction stick. Brian, introduce yourself. Yay. Um, I'm Brian. I'm the head writer for D20 Tales. And I am playing Soars. Soars is a fighter of sorts. He wears oh, armor that seems to be made of a strange greenish alloy. Um. He carries a very large sword on his back, and he also has a number of hand axes that hang from various po points on his armor. Uh, he looks to be human, but something in his eyes betrays something different. Ooh. His pupils are slightly elongated, and when he shakes hands, his hands are a little bit unnaturally cold. Uh, he has been on the island for some time. And he tends to wander quite a bit, but he's very secretive as to what he's doing there or what, or why he's there at all, other than as a mercenary hired by the pirates who run much of the island. Great. Introduction stick. Jesse. I'm Jesse. I am with D20 Tales. Obviously, I would think uh, that would be part of the requirement for being here. I play Giras on the Heralds of Weyanar. But in this lovely uh, one shot here, I am playing Finnegan Redtail, who is your stereotypical swashbuckling rogue pirate who uh, uh, is a tabaxi, which is hence the red tail. He has a lovely red bushy tail. Um, but yeah, anything you would think of in a uh, stereotypical swashbuckling pirate, uh, that's, that's him. Delightful. Okay. I'm stealing the introduction stick from you, and I'm going to drop it on Paige's head. Bonk. No. Yep. It's bonked. Me. I want it back. You've been bonked. Mine. Okay. I am Paige. I do a plethora of things on the project, including editing and COO, all sorts of fun stuff. I play Emiliana on Emissaries. And today, though, I am playing Aurabelle. And Ooh. one of the important things to note about what we're doing today is it's based off of the Quiet Year game we played yesterday. So playing a ghost a ghosty she's girl a lovely, she's a lovely little ghost girl because our island is inhabited with undead so she comes from uh the big tree in the center that's currently on fire on the map but she has lived there for an unspecified unspecified amount of time that she won't talk about and she is just extremely curious and excited to share this island with new living people she hasn't seen living people before so she is just so excited to be sharing this experience, and she's just very curious about everything that's happening. Yeah. Okay, great. Throw the introduction stick sideways. Kristen Can Coleman. Do. 
There you go. Thanks for the stick. Um, no, so uh, I'm Kristen. I'm actually um, uh, the producer on the show, and I also play Shezo. Um, but today I'm actually playing um, Anna Swift. Um, she is an elven um, elven wizard, a blade singer. Um, every time she swings her blade, it kind of makes, you know, almost music. Um, and she is, um, she's uh, in pure black um, with studded leather. She's definitely a pirate. Um, and she has piercing gray eyes, brown hair, uh, medium length, brown, medium to long brown hair. Um, yeah, that's uh, pretty, and she has a scimitar on one side and a rapier on the other. Nice. She's got weapons. Watch out, folks. All right, and I'm going to steal the introduction stick. Hello, I'm Rose. I'm the person that you maybe watched talk at nothing for a couple minutes. I'm so sorry. Um, but I'm Rose. Uh, I play Viscera on the show Heralds of Wayanar, and I'm also the lore keeper for D20 Tales and the host of Creator Clash, which is starting weekly, next week Sunday, every Sunday at 5 p.m. Uh, it's a level one little battle royale mini adventure type thing with creators all across the space. So it's super fun and you should come check it out uh, next week and any week after that. But yeah, so as Paige so wonderfully and graciously um, brought up, this one shot is taking place in the setting that we created yesterday on our Quiet Year stream. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it does feel like Kristen just made a pirate Shezo. <laughs> I did not. Right? <laughs> she, she uses a sword. <laughs> she feels so much it's like so a pirate. So different. <laughs> it's a sword, guys. Yeah, and she's spells. a sword wizard, not just a normal wizard. Just, just the sword wizard. <laughs> um, but this stream is taking place in the setting that we created yesterday during the Quiet Year stream. So if you didn't watch that, uh, go watch it. It's super fun. It's super cool. Uh, everybody here except for Jesse was on it. It's okay, Jesse. We still love you. Um, even That's though fine. it's fine, we still love you. Um, and that stream is super fun because it's got a bunch of really interesting and cool conflicts, and it's got really some interesting plot lines cool. and some really interesting places to be that we didn't really even get to explore, which is really unfortunate. But we get to explore one of those today, here and now. So we are going to be playing in this wonderful world of Brimstone. So, this world, and this specifically, this island, is a home to uh, many an interesting creature, many an interesting humanoid, and more, I don't wanna say more importantly, but more interestingly maybe, many and unique undead. For this island is inhabited equally by pirates that have sailed here to escape their capitalist overlords, then it's inhabited by a bunch of undead, miscellaneous zombies, ghosts, and other creatures that once had a life, but now lo no longer do for any amount of various reasons. Mm, um, vibes. Well, this town, in its early stages, the town of pirates was uh, peaceful for a little bit, even though there was, um, you know, some very, very strong-willed clans the two clans, the Red Blades and the Grinners, had decided to come here and work together to try and live a life where they could prepare for the oncoming invasion of the people that they used to work for. However, things go sour very fast when there are two very strong rival clans with some very strong and rivaling individuals inside of them. So, as spring turned into summer, projects failed, Projects were started, conflicts started, and more importantly to our plot today, there was a plot hot hatched by a young girl to unite the two clans in an effort to withstand strong against the cultists that had broken off from the main group and started controlling the undead and performing weird arcane rituals. This young girl whipped the townsfolk into a frenzy and got everything exactly where she needed it, but at a moment that was too late for her, for the undead and the cultists learned of this plan and came to the city and started a very violent battle in order to 
demoralize the group and kill the young woman, which they did, effectively martyring this young girl and taking her body back to their camp as a trophy. As well as, in addition to stealing all the food supply, this battle had left the people and the, uh, the pirates battle-worn, weary, unhappy, and scared. And, more importantly, it had left the cultists with a very strong weapon. So, we begin with the story and the viewpoint of Orabel. Orabel, you've been watching this city. You've been waiting and looking and lurking and building up courage to talk to all of the mortals and the living beings that have made it onto your island. Hi, Arctic Knight. You've made it onto your island. And you've been watching and you've been waiting outside this town for weeks, building up courage. But the courage that you had was replaced temporarily by fear and confusion. For this battle was very bloody. You watched as these cultists and these these very interesting looking undead that you knew once to be peaceful, but under the control of these cultists, violent, bloody. You watched them come into this village and shed blood, break families, all in front of your eyes. And you watched as they left this village, carrying the body of this young, bright-eyed revolutionary, leaving a trail of blood in their wake. You followed them all the way back to the large tree that you used to call your home and their small mm, village in front of it. Orabel, while watching these people confer over the body and figure out what to do with it, you found two key pieces of information. One, they were planning on restoring this woman and trying to revive her in a way to demoralize the town. And two, that there is a set of underwater undead that live underneath the island itself that control large creatures and creatures and beings of immense power underwater. And these creatures are flightly, strong, quick to anger, and also quick to defend themselves. And the cultists want to rile some things up. What are you going to do? Knowing that and having watched these people for so long, I've probably felt a kinship with them. And I'm just I'm just very invested in these living people. And I want them to be safe and happy. And knowing that stopping this cultist plan will probably help them, uh, I'm going to head straight to the village that I was observing and try and get some people to help me. Okay. Well, as you head to the village, you think on back on the people that you know have been more kind, more open and powerful that could help you in the way. Um, And you think of several beings. One of them, you think of a mm, rough around the edges fighter, seems to be, he seems to be doing well with a sword and he could possibly help you. That being said, you don't know how willing he would be to do something just because it was good. You know of a, a, a pirate with the ego the size of the sun itself you know that he's extremely skilled with the sword, which is unfortunate because it just inflates his big head over and over even more. <laughs> and you think of a helpful and extremely skilled wizard who, who walks around the, the town with a blade at each hip and keeps the, keeps the members of the village from causing too much harm to the surrounding wilderness. Anna. Anna, yes. Uh, you said earlier that you would be practicing right about now. Yeah, I would be probably practicing with a uh, with a uh, dummy, and just kind of you know, performing moves and and flourishes. All right, as you practice with this dummy out in a field outside one of the uh, outside the main circle, so as to not hurt anyone, get in the way. You see a small incorporeal figure just at the periphery of your vision dart out from a tree and then dart behind it and then dart out and then dart behind it again. I will immediately turn and with my with my with my rapier out come out. Who who are you? What do you want? Please, I just I I just want to talk to you for 
I have some information I think you might want to know. Um, so, a few days ago, I saw that big bloodbath in your streets, and I saw them carry away a, a, a body, and I followed them. They are also the living people. I would say you're friends, but you guys don't seem all that friendly. Uh, but the people y'all were fighting with, and I followed them back to the tree, and uh, they're scheming something nefarious, and I don't think it spells good for you guys or me particularly. And I think that we need to do something about it. I don't have a lot of information about what they're going to do or what they're looking for, but there's something under the island that they are trying to mess with that could spell doom for us, so... I was hoping that maybe you could help me. So you you want me to go under the water and find this thing? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I know you all are super great at going under the water, uh, but do, I'm sure we I could. do not swim so well. It's not a good thing. <laughs> well, I'm sure we can come up with something. I'm not sure what yet, but... I would like to have our team put together if, if you're willing to help me and then maybe they can maybe they'll have some resources or I don't know. I mean have to figure it out. Most of the people around here are assholes, so I don't uh I don't associate with most of them, but uh there are a few that are okay fighters. I mean there's the the, the, the big headed asshole over here, he will probably challenge me to a duel. He always does this. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that more than once, but uh, all right. Well, let's start with him then. Yeah, sure. His name is um, Finnegan. <clears throat> asshole Finnegan. You can call him Asshole Finnegan. <laughs> Jesse, uh, yes. tempting as that may be. Tempting as that may be. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to make friends here, not necessarily make people upset. So, but let's go talk to him. We have some work to do. All right, so I will I will put my sword back in a little bit of a flourish and start wa I'm trying to find Finnegan. Well, Finnegan, the most flambo Finnegan the flamboyant is what you like to call yourself in your mind, uh, but nobody ever calls you that. They think it's Good. a okay. little, you know, aggressive, but you like to think that people like to call you Flinnegan the flamboyant. Uh, Flinnegan the flamboyant. Flinnegan. <laughs> You are standing next to a large cask of ale, immediately next Absolutely. to the large breakfast uh, pot that has been brewing and cooking all morning, that as you sit and drink and embrace or shun the sun's rays, many other pirates exit, grab some food, some slightly hungover, some actively drinking like yourself, and you observe this town, this, these town full of inferior sword fighters to you, all standing around doing a bunch of, ugh, nothing that could possibly be as important as what you're doing. You um, see. So, uh, oh, oh go, ahead, go ahead. You see, as you uh, observe this large area, a mm, welcome and unwelcome sight. Welcome in the fact that you see more people. Ah, more people to listen to you. Unfortunately, this is a person who uh, may or may not listen to you. You see Anna approaching with a small, incorporeal, ghostly form at her side. Well, seeing the ghostly form, um, he's going to put that in the back of his brain, first thinking that it's just an illusion from having a little too much uh, ale and going to have a little bit more ale to go with that, take a nice big swig, and then he's going to turn his attention to Anna for the time being and be like, ah, there's a good fighter to have a good old-fashioned fight with in the morning. Have at thee. <laughs> Gotta get and the blood I, and going. I look at you, and I'm like, I am not drunk enough for these. Hold on. And I will reach over and grab one, grab an ale off of the table and dr just guzzle some, um, because everybody here is an alcoholic, apparently. Um, <laughs> for context, for our viewers, <laughs> if you didn't see the quiet year, the religion at this time uh, the whole bit about the religion is to sit around fires, drink a lot of alcohol, and eat a lot of food. And, and that's that is it. the religion. It's the religion. It's the whole bit. <laughs> it brings so, joy. 
I, 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 I take a big swig. I set it down, and I rip, actually with the with the actually I don't set it down. I'll, I'll with the with it in hand. I will I will pull Perfect. out my rapier, and 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 just kind of you know wave it at him as as I approach. And as soon as she pulls out her rapier, I go in for it. Ooh! Everybody, roll initiative, please. All right. Are we using the same, or are we? Ah, uh, use the rolling? same. It's fine. Okay. All right. 21. Oh. And I got an 18. Or a four Good rolls. Yeah, 18. All right, Jesse, make your attack roll. All right. So, before he had sloshed a little bit of ale right there as soon as he pulled out his sword and held it up, but as soon as Anna held out hers, he immediately turns into this super dexterous person. He gets low to the ground and he goes right in for a jab, trying to tap at her um, midsection, um, trying to do the, uh, the old five tap. Not trying to kill anyone, just trying to, to win as sparring matches go this way, and he's just going to go straight for a jab. That'll be a 19 to hit. Ooh, that's going to hit. Hit. All right. You get so, in your yep, first. He'll do the first tap right there low, and then he's immediately going to swing up with the other hand, clink his uh, flagon against hers, and then he's going to dash back. Not actually dashing, though. He's just uh, moving back 50 feet. And he oh, will turn around my. then. Stick his yeah, he gets to double his speed whenever he's moved and attacked. Stick I his will. rapier without a provoking attack of opportunity. Oh my! Yeah. That's insane. Okay. <laughs> so he uh, throws his rapier up on his side, takes another swig. <clears throat> That's one. <laughs> I kind of I I'll I look at you. That was that was that was pretty good. I I. <laughs> But don't fucking run away! <laughs> you pussy, come back! Literally. Soars. Brooding on the side of a large uh, building, you watch as your... Uh, hmm, you don't want to call them friends, maybe. I don't know, it's up, up to you. You watch as Finnegan and Anna engage in the old game of Five Tap. Uh, the way that you pirates have created a way, a system to spar and, you know, get in some healthy rivalries without actually hurting anybody that needs to be doing work. You watch as they, uh, you know, trade a few blows, dance back, trade some insulting words. In addition, you see a small ghostly figure standing and spectating. A small little bit of fl uh, ale gets flomped on their face. <laughs> well, I'm also holding a flagon, but it's full. And I look down into it, and I look back at the spirit. Dead one, come. I wish to speak to you. Speak to me? Okay. Yes. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna rush over. And I look closely at the ale. This ale, <laughs> it's laced with the sap from your home. What does it do? That does it create fools like these? I don't... I think they may have been fools to start. I mean, I just <laughs> met them, so I don't know, but... Uh, That's a uh, fast one. <laughs> yeah. Um, as for what it does, uh, I've Fine. never actually drank from it, but... Uh, evaluating from how the uh, your friends who live by my tree respond to it, not great. They tend to definitely act really strange. Another foolish lot. So why are you here? That's a good question. Um, I'm I'm gathering some people. Uh, the the fighters who came in here and murdered so many of these nice people in this town that I've come to really enjoy watching. Um. They they took that girl who was leading and they took her back to the tree and they're doing some nefarious things and I'm worried it's going to spell doom for this island and I'm trying to gather some people to stop them. This would be regrettable. I'm not done with this place just yet. Um, tell me, mm -hmm. how do you intend to stop them? And that's why I need friends. I All I know is that there's something under the island, some large creatures that they're trying to stir up and I don't I don't know if it's best to start with 
the outsiders themselves or to try and go under and figure out what it is but i don't know i'm kind of leaning towards figuring out what it is i'm I'm curious what what's under there and you know nothing as to its nature what i've told you is the most i know hmm and you'd like to recruit those two they're the best i have right now unless of course you seem to have your wits about you Care to join? So I look up and I call out, "What's your, what's Jesse? What's your character's name again?" Finnegan Redtail. <laughs> I say, "Finnegan, come." And uh, I talk to him just like a pet. Oh, you want to have one as well? Well, wait your turn. <laughs> Not particularly. I want you to sheath your weapon and join our ghostly friend on a little bit of a uh, exploratory mission. And I use my suggestion power, so make a wisdom saving saving throw at uh, What? <laughs> oh. oh my. Oh, fun. Okay. PvP wisdom spells! Save, say? Spells are already being thrown. Uh, wisdom save. Oh, that's just a plus zero modifier. 15, though. Oh, so I made think, it. I think I made it. Mm. He succeeded, so... <clears throat> Uh, he looks you up and down. Uh, you know what? Maybe I don't need to wait for this round to be over. I'll take you both on at once. How about that? And I'll tell you what. You beat me and I'll go with you. No problems. No questions asked. While he's talking to him, I sneak around and smack him in the back three times. Oh! <laughs> okay, make a stealth check. Yeah. Uh, and then if you do successfully make a stealth check against his passive... Uh, you'll be just fine. Jesse, what's oh, your passive? My oh, My passive perception is not good. 13. Um, uh, that is an 18 plus 4. Oh, oh my! God. So sneaky! Okay. Get him, Kristen, get him! <laughs> yeah, describe how you... So while he's kind of talking to, uh, to the very large uh, fighter, I kind of just take a couple steps and just... <laughs> So you, you know how cats react when they get startled? Uh, that's exactly what happens there. He, like, jumps, like, six feet in the air and, like, flails all around while he's in the air and then lands oh. on all fours. Um, oh. He's like... <laughs> and then he Goodness. whips around um, and he goes in for a jab with himself while pulling out his dagger as well. Ooh, okay. Uh, I'm going to make an attack roll. Go for it. I just sprayed him with a water bottle. It's <laughs> <laughs> a 27. <gasps> oh my goodness, okay. Yeah, you can get a tap in. Yeah, and uh, the second one is also a 25 for the dagger as a bonus action attack. Um, so with that, he'll land on all fours and then he'll come up with his rapier and make, ah, cheap shots, huh? Tap, and then he'll jump to the side and tap with the dagger as well. And then he's going to do the same thing he did before, and he's going to back up. Uh, about, you know, this time he'll only back up about 30 feet, and he'll get so that he's like a triangular distance between um, Brian's character and Kristen's character. Ooh. Ah, so you're cheating, huh? Sword remains seated. Sword sheath. <laughs> and, and Brian, what was your character's name again? Sores. S-O-R-E-S? S-O-R-Z-E. Ooh. He's a sores like. surer. <laughs> Good God! <laughs> <laughs> oh, the score sits three, three according to my count now. <clears throat> and and then and then I kind of just kind of turned my sword to swords. So you want to go too? Look back at the sword on my back. The swords is not particularly large. He's maybe six feet tall, but I look at the sword on my back, and the handle sticks out about this far, and it looks like it weighs about 50 pounds. My God. And I look back, my sword is not for sparring. But by all means. All right, and then I will, um, that was bonus action. I will then uh, take my two attacks. At... <laughs> <laughs> Gotta move. Go for it. Oh, yeah, you are 30 feet away. I will. I am I 30 will... feet away. Oh, I know what I... Jesse's about to do. <laughs> Oh no. I will um I don't know if you do. 
because I don't know what I'm about to do. Oh, well, oh, okay, never mind then. Maybe you won't do this thing that I think that you should be able to do. I don't know what I should be able to do. I will run, go towards him, use my regular walking speed of 30 feet, because he said he's 30 feet away, Mm -hmm. and make my two attacks. What should I be able to do? I'm not going to tell you until after you do it or not. Uh, The first one is a... The DM can't take sides. Um... It's yeah, a, a 19 to hit. Uh, yeah, a 19 will hit. Uh, I'm not going to do anything fancy because I don't I don't know what I'm supposed to be able to do here that Rose seems to know. Okay. I'm not trying to psych you out. <laughs> and then um, the next one is a 24 to hit. Oh, my. I mean, would, would, would an uncanny dodge, like, have that miss? No, it's still going to hit. No. Okay, fine. That's five um, tap, though. That's five. And I and that, I, I smack him twice with the end of my rapier, just kind of like, tink, 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 tink. <clears throat> I, uh, I, I, I think you have lost. But it was a oh. good try. You have not beaten me yet. So you're coming along? I'm going to say as I run up to you guys. And I, and I kind of push, put my flagon in the air. Yes, I am. <laughs> I think technically drink. that was cheap win which is why I like it <laughs> of course I'm gonna come along anyone who plays that dirty deserves to be followed at least for a day at least for a day what do we want hell of a day <laughs> alright so the uh, agreements all around to you know See what's going on underneath the island. Our little party makes their way to the edge of the village that butts up against the nice shore where your small ship came in the first time and the first day before it was so rudely sunk. Uh, And now you are left without ships of any kind. Ah. So. (laughs) Yes, they were sunk by Russell. (laughs) Hey. Ah, so, uh... What are we doing again? I have no idea that we are following. Great. Where are we going? The ghost. I don't know. Oh, my, my name's Aurabel. Master oh. Aurabel. I thought you were the hangover. No. Oh. What? So you really what? are there, and he goes to stick his finger in you. What? <laughs> I just kind of watch as you. Have you Good not ship. met. You not met a ghost before? I never said I didn't. I said I thought you were the ale talking. Are you this uh, forward with all the ghosts? As you like stick your finger through her. (laughs) (laughs) Can can you be stabbed? Let's not give it a try right now. I never said I was going to try. I was just asking the question. I'll be honest, I haven't tried. And I have an unstabbable person with us, I'm just <laughs> saying. Someone who can't be stabbed is a valuable asset. That is fair. That. <laughs> <laughs> All right, All so, right. Orabel, you would know that uh, you didn't have quite an exact specific location that you'd know that these people were living. You just know that they were generally under the tip of the large peninsula. Um, Underneath what you would know, and what you would uh, have named, the Black Castle. The large Uh. monolith at the end of the peninsula. Okay, so I know it's under the Black Castle. You know that they're probably under the Black Castle. Okay. (laughs) So specific. Well, from what I've heard, have uh, either of the three of you been to that, to to the Black Castle? And I say and kind of gesture to it. And we all kind of look like it's the very first time we've actually ever seen it. Because <laughs> we didn't know about it yet. <laughs> I don't think so, because I don't think we controlled the uh, the waterway yet. Uh, no, you didn't. So, so nope. I don't know if you've just, I don't think you've discovered it yet. <laughs> nope. What are you talking about? We can make this canon that this is how you discover the, it. The I like that a lot. That's great. Where did that... Where did that thing come from? What do you mean, where did it come from? It's been there the whole time. It's been uh, there for never years noticed and years. It. 
<laughs> that looks like fun. So we're you climbing that we're... thing? No. Listen, I have a little <laughs> bit of healing spells I can help with, but I don't think falling from that I can help with. I got these. <laughs> and his claws come out. Ching, ching. I got these. I'll be fine. I can climb it. Oh, goodness. If I didn't need you, I'd let you try, because I'm curious to see these skills that you're very confident in. Uh, but no, uh, I believe what we're looking for is near slash under the Black Castle. So we like got Like underground? Uh, under the water, my friend. Can and... the three of you, I don't have to worry about breathing myself, but do the three of you have any way to breathe under the water? Well, no, I might have been too quick to jump on this bandwagon. Water and me, we don't mix very well. Sigh. I mean, and, is pretty well. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and, I, and I, I pull out a small case and I open it up and it has several vials lined up. Oh. What this are these? will do the trick. Oh. oh. I hand one to Finnegan and hand one to Kristen. What's your character's name again? Anna. And I hand one to Anna. And I take one out for myself, and I stash the rest into my uh, into my into my bag. Perfect. Bottoms up. Uh, I uncork it. Exactly. What does this this thing do? You two sit around all day, pouring poison down your throat, and you're worried about a little green liquid. That's not that's not comforting. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. <laughs> I I Here, might drink this anyway, but see, I don't. Ah, and I don't... and and, and right, right after I drink it, I lick my lips, and you see, uh, my my tongue is deep purple and forked, and oh, then I grin. Interesting. interesting. See, I don't. I don't really do water. I don't like getting my fur wet. Well, so you're you... something of a coward. Ooh. Mm. Bottoms up. <laughs> I pop the cork and drink it. <laughs> I would say I have more of an awareness of water. I'm aware of it. It's right there. I don't quite know what you're going for, but <laughs> I mean, I'll drink this. I don't know what it's supposed to do. <laughs> All right. I mean, even if it does lead to your death, I you could join me. I got a home. I stretch to my neck to each side, and you notice it that does these not do gills any, It does not do form. anything. It is uh, very bad. I look up. Feel your neck. And I stretch, and you notice that these little gills are starting to form right along the side of my neck. As each of you are now made aware, you feel a very sharp set of pain run along each of your sides of your neck. As you feel gills start to sprout out of your skin... Uh, Finnegan, some of the your fur gets like shaved off a little bit as you see like a small like bit of it just falls off to the side and you now have each gills on the side of your necks that are humming slightly in the air with each breath you take. I don't like it. That is not a pleasant feeling. All right. Well, we have a long way to go and a lot of work to get done, so. Let's head to the Black Castle. All right. So we'll head into the water. The four of you head in the water. No? All right. The four of you head into the water, wading first up to your ankles and then to your knees and then to your waists, your shoulders, and finally your heads. For those of you who have, the cat has become what he eats. Oh, goodness. You really are what she yeah. ate, huh? <laughs> I don't Finnegan. like this. Oh, goodness. For those of you that haven't breathed underwater under- before, uh, it's really weird. You breathe in, and for the first moment that you actually breathe water into your lungs, you think you're gonna, you think you're gonna um, suffocate for a minute, but you're okay. You can breathe out, and as you breathe out, you feel that the, uh, the gills on the side of your neck each just flitter just a little bit with each breath that you take. And you are able to swim underwater towards the Black Tower. 
as you swim. I don't like the way my ears feel. Oh, you're always such a wet cat. <laughs> as you swim, you notice some very interesting things. You notice uh, many, many, many a fish, a brightly colored fish all around you. These fish are some that you have not seen in the village, uh, mainly because you have not been able to fish as of yet. But you uh, swim out in the midst of these fish, and as you look down, down, down into the mostly clear water beneath you, you see uh, some interesting sights on the floor of this uh, of this bay. You see two large ships that have huge gashes cut through the side of them, uh, and then a small half of a ship that's been miscellaneous, mangled, all of the above, that is lying almost towards the uh, tip of the bay. The half ship is one of half of its sails, just the just the just the hull uh, is remaining, and you guys are able to swim very easily and without incident underneath the peninsula. And as you approach deeper and deeper and deeper underwater, the light around you starts to fade, and you find yourself in dark, dark water. As you approach the underneath of this uh, peninsula, you see that where you had once thought was abandoned, because, you know, you don't really expect people to be living underwater, uh, there are people. Eh? You see that there is a small set of figures moving through the air. Um, will everybody please make me a perception check? Eighteen. Uh, Twenty-three. Okay. Ooh. Perception. Nice. Uh, Twenty-three. Oh my. Wow. It's gonna be a big ten for me. Ooh, ouch. Okay. So, Kristen and Paige. You both see that these small figures are several hundred yards away in the water. The only reason you could spot them is because they are glowing. Luckily for the four of you, you are not glowing, so you don't think that they've spotted you yet, but you see two small figures swimming through the water with fins sprouting off of their heads and then continuing all the way down the backs of their bodies, out towards and through their fins. These are, um, they're a type of zombified undead merfolk. Okay, interesting. I love and you that. said Kristen and Paige are the ones who were able to see that? Yeah. I will, I will kind of stop for a moment and I will tap, um, uh, Sorns and Finnegan and point them out. Do you see that? Interesting. I see lights. Should we go talk to them? Maybe they know more than we do. We're gonna talk to lights? No. <laughs> the no. Undead. Oh, we're talking to undead. And I turned <laughs> to our ghost friend. Hello. Oh, <laughs> not, not not me. I appreciate the sentiment, though. I like talking to you too. Those undead, and I'll point farther at the merfolk and try and draw your attention to them, not me. Okay, let's go. And I'll start swimming oh, towards no. them. <laughs> All right, following right behind. Oh my! All right, are you swimming <laughs> up to the undead? I I just kind of. Why do I why why do I do these things? I don't know. And I will start to go behind okay. him. It's not how I thought this was gonna shake out. <laughs> Brian I'm going last and staying about twenty feet behind the other. <laughs> Smart move. Uh, I'm not I'm I'm still behind him, I'm just not super close. Okay, so it goes Jesse, uh so sorry, it goes Finnegan then Orabel. And then about like 10, 15 feet behind them is Anna. And then another like 20 feet behind Anna is Soars. Yeah? Uh, yep. Yeah. Great. So when I, we I, get close. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, I'm not going to get all the way up to them mm -hmm. per se. Well, are you going yeah, to. Gonna... Sorry, Paige? Oh, I was just going to say, I want to stop him if he gets within 10 feet of them. Okay. 
Oh, I'm not getting within 10 feet. Okay. I was going to get within like 40, 30 feet, somewhere in that range. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. Okay. About 40 feet, we'll say. About 40 feet? Great. So you start swimming up towards them, and these two, uh, these two merfolk stop and see you, and they look at each other, and you see that they pull large tridents from behind their backs and put two hands on them and kind of stick them out towards you a little bit. Uh, do, hold on, I need to check something real quick. Right? I don't think any of you guys speak this language, which would be incredibly Fun. unfortunate. I speak a couple languages. Let me see what languages I speak. Let me see. I... Let me see my languages. I did not pick my extra language. Well, you can pick this one then for the vibes. Okay. Because for the vibe, I it, know the language. Is it either abyssal or infernal? I know those two. It is neither of those two. I appreciate your okay. contribution though, Paige. Gotcha. Okay. So you call yeah, out to I these have draconic and undercommon. Oh, um, gotcha. Undercommon was gonna be my second choice if I didn't go with this first language for them. So <laughs> I love undercommon as a DM. I think it's way underused. Underused. Uh, uh, uh. It's undercommonly used. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Still looking for that groan button. <laughs> uh, we'll get. We'll upload a custom emoji for you, Brian. We need one. I need it. <laughs> okay. Well, as you approach, Jesse, you can hear these two merfolk call out to you, and you hear, "Stop! What? Why? Who are you?" So what language is it? Just clarification. Oh, it's merfolk. Merfolk. Okay. It's just straight so up I the speak name. Merfolk. It's merfolk. It's merfolk. That's the language. Okay, perfect. I speak merfolk. Uh, so hearing that, I will. I'll stop dead in the water. I'm gonna try and like do a stance that I would do on land, but in water, like where I, I stand super paunch and, and hands on hips and like try to to look all tough underwater and it's like While not floating. working because I keep kind of floating and yeah, <laughs> moving. <clears throat> I, I am Finnegan Redtail. How about you? Finnegan you, you don't have a tail or fins. Yes, I do. And I turn. Oh, you have a tail. <laughs> I didn't know you had a tail. Oh, yeah, I've got a tail. I've got a red bushy tail. Ah! One of them lets it's out a small exploration, like though. swims backwards a little bit. <coughs> Your tail is. Oh, mm, I thought he were uglier that's at new. first, but that's less ugly. Mm, the rest that's, of them that, are. That, that, that's ugly, a new though. addition, I must add. Ah. Well, it'll be a shame when it leaves. The rest of them are ugly. Who said it was going to leave? I... No, I mean... Hey, were these things going to wear off? And I just, I talk back to everyone and I gesture to the, to the girls. Shrug. <laughs> That's <Eventually>. not helpful. <laughs> Great. Okay, well, I guess you're right. I, news to me. I didn't know that. Mm. And one of them, so, like... Mm. Oh, no, no, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, one of them starts to, like, touch their own gills and try and compare. Anyway, um, why, why, why are you here, friend, and uh, not friend, why are you here? And then the other one, like, steps in front and takes out their trident. State your business. We do not receive travelers here. This is not a state, as far as I know. Uh, our business... I also don't know, but I would love to spar if you want to spar. What are you? <laughs> I'm trying no to decide if that's a saying. persuasion check. Maybe persuasion checks so that to to determine. Somewhere between a persuasion and intimidation check. Yeah, I'm like, what is this? <laughs> what are you trying to accomplish? I would love to try and persuade them to uh, have to a, a spar, to spar with you. Okay, roll yes. persuasion. I'm gonna roll insight for this merfolk to see if he thinks that you're being a dick and just... Okay. I have no idea what's happening. I also Start have no idea. 22. What the fuck? <laughs> Expertise. Oh my God. Okay. You say this and the merfolk that like was behind the other one kind of pokes their head out. I think it would be a wise thing to spar with these people. I think that'd be very fun. 
and they say to the other person, um, f- good friend, <laughs> friend, um, Mr. Finn Tail. Uh, Finn again. Uh, sure, yeah, Finn again, haha. I would like to spar uh-huh. with you. And they will kind Excellent. of swim out and take out their trident. Uh-huh. Oh, and he takes out the trident because, because I see this. Mm-hmm. I have no idea what they're saying. <laughs> No, you do not. You do not. I forgot. I don't understand. What's happening? <laughs> I see them take out their trident, and he pulls out his weapon. I'm pulling out my weapon. Oh, no! <laughs> no idea what's going on. Oh, do you say no. that out loud, or do you say anything? Okay. Uh, will, will anybody, I, will everybody like, actually please roll initiative just so that we can determine order for this? <laughs> please? <laughs> this is going so well. Oh, my. Oh, my gosh. This dice is doing well today. Yeah. Oh, another 21 for initiative. Yo! Oh my goodness. I mean, I do have a plus 8 to initiative, so. That's so good. Kristen, what'd you roll? Uh, I got a 5. A 5? Okay. Brian I and Paige, do you want to roll initiative or do you just want to let this be? 7 for oh, me. 7. Ooh. I roll uh, nat 20. Oh, wait, no. Nat 20 plus? No. Uh, 0. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh goodness. Okay. Let me take these down real quick. A so um Paige is going to go first because she'll not total 20. So Aurabelle gets to go first, followed by Finnegan. Uh, and then we'll go from there. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna kind of just pop in front of Finnegan's face. Like not so he can still <laughs> see past me in case I think they're fighting. I'm just gonna kind of be like. Like, trying to see if he'll... Like, what are you doing? <laughs> Why? Do you mind? Do you mind? Why are we fighting? We're, about to, we're about to have a lovely sparring match. Do you mind? Why are we fighting? We don't... Sparring? What we else? We don't need a fight. Five Why else. Are we, we don't need Four. a fight. Three. It's Two. fine. Just oh, excuse me. Shit. To, oh, or, uh, okay, finish finish again. It's your turn. <laughs> All right. I look back and I, 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 after that interaction, I'm going to swim around her. I'm going to look back then. I'm going to say, it's all right. It's all right. I got this. We're just going to have a lovely sparring match and then we can move on with whatever it was we were supposed to do. <clears throat> all right. And then, uh, yep, I pull out my, my rapier and, and I realize that I am underwater. Um, <laughs> yep. And so I, I take like a swish or two and I, I try and like get the feel for how my rapier moves underwater. Okay. Um, and then I attempt to do exactly what I did with Anna and dash at her and realize that I am swimming in the water. Yup. And I am swimming. Yup. So I, I You're turn swimming. like completely horizontally and I try and like stick my rapier all the way out and I try and like kick my little legs behind me. <laughs> ah! <laughs> New move. Okay. okay. You can make an attack at disadvantage as you horizontally like spear yourself with your little feet <laughs> flapping behind you in the water. <laughs> okay, I'm I'm doing the tapping thing as well. I'm not trying to actually do damage. Um, okay, at disadvantage. That is a 15 to hit. No, wait, I lied. 14 to hit. Uh, that's still gonna hit. Their IC is not very high. They are more for gold. Wow. Okay, so I'll do like a um, over. I'm gonna swish over mm-hmm. their trident and tap like right above the the chest on like their shoulder. I'm gonna do a tap tap. I'm like, ah, that's one for me. And then I'm gonna try and do the thing where I go back <laughs> and realize that I can't. Um, Are you swimming still? So I, I will just straighten out and like turn sideways to try and make myself smaller, um, and hold my sword out. Okay. Uh, well, it's the merfolk's turn, and seeing that several people have just taken out their weapons, um, and acted very fast, the merfolk that was less jazzed about you two being there, about all five of you being there, is going to swim out and swim directly with their, uh, trident, like, swim directly at the, um, at, uh, oh, shoot, what's her name? Anna? because they saw Anna had their weapon out, and so they're gonna swim directly at Anna with their trident out. And they're not going to attack, but they're gonna sit there, and they're going to kind of like hunker down, and you see that they're preparing for, uh, they're preparing for something. Um, and what that something is, takes their turn next. There's something, is their other merfolk friend? And so the other merfolk friend that is in uh, melee with Finnegan is going to see that you've tapped them and go, ha! And they're going to make an attack against you, and they sp- you know, stab their trident up. Uh, I'm gonna swim around so they're, they have a larger target. And I'm gonna roll for that. 
with our beautiful, lovely well. Misty Mountain Gaming Dice. Ooh. Speaking of Misty Mountain Gaming Dice, I'm using two Misty Mountain Ooh, Dice. I'm also two using Misty Mountain, Mountain Gaming, Gaming Dice. dice. Ooh. Okay. Go check them out. Yeah. Uh, ooh, that definitely hit. That was an 18 on the die. Oh, yeah, no, that, that hits. Okay, uh, so For here's sure. the thing. Try, uh, these try, these friends, merfolk friends, do not know about the taps. Uh, so That's you're just going to take this. So I'm going to then uncanny dodge. Okay, you can have this damage then. Uh, okay. That is going to be... Um, thanks, James. Hmm? I said thanks, James. The transition oh, yeah, to thanks, the ad James. was flawless. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> uh, that is going to be a... Nine points of uh, piercing damage. I f couldn't do math. Is that halved or is that before it's That's halved? before it's halved. So halved down okay. to five. Five damage. Yep. Done. Okay. Is there any particular place that they stabbed me with their trident? Yeah, they kind of stabbed and they like came around and they swam around you so that they had a larger uh, like target. And then they just gah, jab their trident like into your side. You start seeing some small... What color is your blood? As uh, your friend? As a... Um... When I assume just red. Okay. Small clouds of, like, dark colored, almost purple uh, blood starts, like, flowing out from the side of you as you start to bleed a little bit. And they pull back their trident. Nice spar! Um, and then they'll ask, are your friends also sparring? I saw that they had their sword, they, they had their weapons ready. Are, you, are they good to spar? Like, tell me. Give me an answer immediately. Um, uh, that was a good hit. Um, are you want to spar? I, no, I don't yes. know if they're sparring or not. I haven't asked them. I can ask if you want. Yeah, Next do it. time, um, you don't normally do a tap with a spar. Oh, you, do, you don't stab oh, into people. A tap. Yeah, okay. like I did, like a tap. Oh, yeah. okay. Hey, don't just, just don't do. And they they start like gesturing over to the other uh, and merfolk, and he shoulder. like, are you sparring as well? I'll shout back to everyone else. Now, <laughs> um, did you say no? <laughs> I just thought you were being attacked. That, that's it. Uh, it sounds like they're not sparring. Mm, the other merfolk like swims backwards a little bit, but has a very suspicious look in their eye and keeps their trident like at the ready next to them. <laughs> I would gladly spar with you as well after this one, if you would like. Mm. Just gives you a little squint. Uh, but the smartphone that you are sparring with seems to be more than happy uh, to continue this conversation with you in this, this mm, dance. And so they say, okay, so we don't like actually stab each other. We just kind of like tap, right? Yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, my and, and apologies. I, I, uh, apologies. No, it's it's just a flesh wound. It's fine. Uh, are, are you sure? Uh, like, do do you need anything? Like, I've got, and they like rummage around in their bag. And you, they pull out like a small uh, piece of glass that is some sort of like goop inside of it. Uh, I mean, what does that do? Uh, I mean, it's good for us. I don't know how good it is for you, but it's good for us. I'll try it. Sure. Oh, okay. And they kind of like push it and wave it through the <laughs> water at you. <laughs> I'll take it, and I. I, without asking, I'm going to assume that you rub it on yourself instead of eat it. So mm. I'm going to take it. I'm going to try and rub it on me. Okay. You take out this, like, goop, and as you as soon as you take it out of the, uh, as soon as you, like, open the stopper and, like, you know, try and get it in your hand, it, like, sticks to your skin. And then as you go and, oh. like, start to try and rub it on, it doesn't actually, like, come off of your hand. It just... <laughs> onto your hand. Is this how it's supposed to work? Uh, no, no, you've got to, you've got to tickle it. You gotta, you gotta, you know, so that it lets go. Tickle Meanwhile. <laughs> tickle, tickle, tickle. As you tickle, tickle, tickle on the back of whatever this slime is, you see small tentacles start to like, and it off of your skin and starts floating in the air. Was that it? Well, no, you've, you've got to put it on, like, the... You've got to put it on where I... You've got, like, oh, on okay. the... Oh, Sorry. I swim up a little bit, not touching it again, so I just kind of flap up, and then I, like, move my side <laughs> to where it is, and I just kind of, like, try and... 
kick <laughs> kick a little bit into it so that my side bumps it. Yeah, make a dexterity check to see how well you can like side swim into this creature. Uh, seventeen. All right, you are pretty pretty easily surprisingly able to side swim into this creature as you as it jumps on and like just starts to suck on your side more or less. Um, but as it sits there, you do feel like the pain slight to lessen slightly, uh, and you're going to regain. Um, let me tell you, you're going to regain three hit points, and you're protected against infection. Wow! From marine That's creatures. Specifically. Oh, okay. Huh. That feels very interesting. It definitely tickles a little bit. It's, should I take it off after some point, or is it gonna just do it on its own? No, no, no. It'll, it, it'll, 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 it, it's fine. Okay, it's like okay. they stay there and they like make sure that nothing gets in it, and so there's no like dirt or you know miscellaneous. In what under? Are you, do you? Oh, I forgot to ask you. Are you underwater folk? No. Oh, no. In fact, I was very. Hesitant that makes to come sense. Down why you're bumbling place. idiots. Um. Yeah. Well, I mean, I can't speak for the rest of them. Ah, uh, gotcha, uh, gotcha. Well, well, I cannot understand why you're a bumbling idiot then. Well, um, respectfully. Uh, well, see, see, when you're underwater, there's a lot of like things that get in the air and that they can just you know get in. Places and ugh, it's really uncomfortable. Um, have you ever tried to like fish a peach of a piece of like flotsam out of a wound? Oh, it's terrible. Anyway, I've tried to fish before. Oh, I don't, I don't know if I've ever tried to fish a uh, whatever you said out of a wound before. Though. Well, I would not suggest it. Regardless, um, what are you guys here for again? And the other bar guard butts in. Yeah, what do you want? Uh, look back. Why are we here? Really? You... <laughs> We're here looking for whatever that creature is that those cultists are hunting for. Ask them if they've seen any big... I don't even know what they were. Maybe big sea monsters? Anything that would be of interest. Oh, by the way, can you guys understand them? Not I can. Not oh, I understand. Just oh, the word. That, that's large... why. Have any large fish swum by me that I are within reach? Uh, there have been a lot of fish swimming more or less around. You've noticed Can that I the fish one? do not get, get within like a hundred feet of these uh, merfolk. But what about me? If you're within a hundred feet of the merfolk, the fish are not by you. Okay. Sorry. Uh, so apparently, um... Hi, Brad. Also, I didn't realize that they, they don't understand you. Uh, apparently only I do. Um, so there's that. Oh, um, that makes sense. We're why looking... they're idiots. Yeah, You're looking? yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah. Um, but we're looking for cultists, big thing, maybe came under here with a person, small, maybe, um, maybe dead, maybe not, uh, maybe somewhere in between. You're looking for a maybe dead, maybe not cultist that came under here with another smaller person. Child. Child. With maybe something big as well. That's not helpful. Let me confer with my ghost friend over Go here. Have, yes, confer. Uh, um, what was your name again? Auras. Aurabelle. Aurabelle. Aurabelle, all right. Um, uh, can you tell me again what it was? We're looking for down here. Keep it simple. Ask for large sea creatures, large goats. Large sea, lard, large, large, large. Okay, and I turn back around. Large sea creatures and or ghosts. Maybe the same thing. Maybe not. Large sea creatures and or ghosts. Maybe the same thing. Maybe not. Yeah. Well. <laughs> you seen any? Well, um, and you see that one of them kind of turns and <laughs> laughs under their breath to the other. Uh, make an insight check for me. Ooh, I don't think I'm good at those. I think I have a zero to that. Oh, I no. do. Oh. So that's just a 12. Okay, a 12. They are, uh, definitely 
familiar with something that you just, uh, they're definitely familiar with something that you just talked about and it's definitely something that they would um, consider funny, obviously. It's pretty easy to get that. Uh, but specifically, they started laughing at the big sea creature uh, part of that sentence for you. <laughs> I start laughing along as well. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> I don't think he knows. <laughs> I don't know what they're saying, but yeah. I can guarantee I, I you of, I do I not. I start laughing too. All right. Ha 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 Carl, huh? Well, there's a lot of them. Um, the one that's roaming around here, that, well, his name, it's really, um, Bicarilnos, but you know, we just call him Carl. It's a mouthful the other way around. Um, but Bicarinos was, is, uh, well, large sea creature. Um, what would, what would they, what would the, what would people call it? Um, a sea serpent? I know what that is. <laughs> good. Um, yeah. Uh, and, and Carl is a good friend of ours, you know. Um, and oh, they, so they smile nice. a little wickedly at that. What? So he's nice. He's nice to us. He's not nice oh, to the people okay. that we don't like. Uh, who's that? People that try and mess with our affairs and the fairs of the underwater city we have built here. So, like, what do I avoid doing to get to do that? How do I not do that? You, well, leave us alone. Make sure that nobody uh, disturbs us, that nobody talks to us. And please don't um, sink any more ships, please. And especially, here's one thing that you can do is you can stop that from happening by not going down and taking anything from the ship's remains. We survive as a community off of those remains. Now, very much, and as, as they say this, they put a hand on their trident. We would very much appreciate it if you don't touch them as they are valuable resources. Question. Yes. Yes, if you survive off of the resources mm -hmm. from the sunk ships, mm -hmm. why do you not want any more sunk? Because they get in the way, they disturb the ecosystem. I mean, here's what you can do. You can sink ships, just sink them like a rotation. So sink ships here, like, maybe once, and then wait a couple months, and then you can sink ships somewhere else. But if you've ever been, have you ever been to the southern tip of the island around the shoals? It's a terrible ecosystem there because so many ships sink all the time. It seems like every every single year there's a new set of ships that show up and sink on those shoals. So just spread it out. Yeah, spread it out, please. Okay, okay. Just don't okay. touch the ship. No, so, don't touch, sink, wider area. Mm-hmm. Carl's friendly to you. Mm hmm And do you know anything about cultists or ghosts? I've seen a ghost. Not that one. Okay. I've not seen a ghost. Um, yeah, no, that's uh, it. Pretty much. Do you mind mm. if we look for... The other thing we're looking for down here, ghosts. What's, uh, what's the other thing you're looking for down here? Ghosts. Ghosts? Mm-hmm. You... I think. Other than that one. Um, sure. Uh, as well, actually, let me let me talk about that. And the one of the one that you've been talking to, the friendly one, um, kind of like swims away and swims over to the one, the other one that's just looking just very haughty and upset the whole time, and they like start whispering. <laughs> Uh, and then the friendly one comes back. It's fine, as long as we come with you, which shouldn't be an issue, right? Okay. Great. Yeah. Let's explore. Uh, um, another question, though. Yeah, qu answer. Um, if I so happen to run out of air, do you have a way to help with that? Oh, yeah, totally. We've got, like, 
Um, well, maybe. We've got some things for us to breathe air up on land um, when we go up there. So we might have some things that we can give you so to breathe water if you run out. Uh, also, it's really, can we do anything about those three? Like, what's the whole reason they're not talking? Oh, they can't understand. Oh, oh, you should have said something earlier. Um, I'm so sorry. I didn't even think about it. I said no worries. To them, or I asked them rather, but I guess I forgot to relay that to you, and I'm gonna have to relay this whole conversation That's, to them. It's, it's fine. No, you know thing. what? We'll just um, and then one that you've been talking to starts like whispering things and he starts casting spells of some sort, and they cast comprehend languages on uh, all sores, <laughs> Anna like and Orabel. I would like to, as he begins to cast, see if I know what the spell is. Make an Arcana check. They could do that the whole time. Oh, that was actually pretty good. That's uh, uh, Arcana is going to be a plus six to that, so that is a 27. Uh, yeah, so oh. as you're watching, you can tell that this is not an aggressive spell. You definitely can tell that this is some sort of, um, some sort of divination magic. So it would not seem I, aggressive I enough. Will, I will allow it. Okay, you're not going to counterspell? <laughs> I will allow it. <laughs> They cast Comprehend Languages on the three of you, uh, and you now can understand and chat and vibe. Oh, uh, so. hello. Oh, hello. It's, this is magical. I can understand you suddenly? Yes, it is magic indeed. You're correct. Uh, so I'm um, so sorry for that the very rude impotence on the rest of us. Um, your dear friend here has just relayed the whole bit uh, about you know everything that we're going for. Um, long story short, the the, the 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 large monster it's carl carl's fine as long as you don't fuck up things um and as long as you don't you know as long as you don't do anything I mean, what stupid do you, what do you mean by fuck up things uh as long as you don't like sink a bunch of ships in the same place every single month that'd be really great if you didn't do that um and as long as you don't come down and touch the shipwrecks please never uh that'd be really great because we so like don't them touch the boat. no don't, don't touch, touch the butt. boats the butt no, don't touch the butt, yes. No, it's an odd uh, <laughs> expression. Don't touch the butt. Uh, yes, but you want to keep looking for ghosts, um, and that's fine as long as we go with you. So, any questions? No, I, I guess that covers it. Okay. Okay, um, you guys understand them. Oh, yeah. Finnegan, you, you guys found me. Just told me you couldn't understand them. What yeah. happened? You guys, were you faking it? Yeah. Yes. We just like to mess with oh. you, Ben, again. Okay. okay. All it was, it was all in your head. Okay. That's easy. I'm going to pull out, like, a small uh, enclosed flask, mm -hmm. uh, unscrew it, and then down it. Okay. <sighs> that tastes saltier than normal. Mm. And I'll put it back. All right. <laughs> so... Uh, these merfolk kind of swim over to the side. Which one of you is leading the charge? I would assume a uh, big, strong man with the I gesture, sword? I gesture to Anna. Oh, huh? okay. Have the wizard lead the way. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, not Anna. Sorry. Uh, I forget your, your name. Orabel. Orabel? Orabel. Gotcha, I, gotcha, I gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Orabel. He gestures towards me, and I kind of... Shrug. Ghost hunting should be done by the ghost. All right. That'd be me. I'm kind of leading the charge, I guess you can say. Lead uh, the way. Well, I shall lead the way. I'll show you a bit of our um. But so you're just looking for anything related to ghosts? I mean, we've we've explored many of the outer catacombs, well, but we have not explored the inner catacombs as much. So I think that's where we're going to lead you. Okay, that seems reasonable. That's a good place to start. And so these uh, two uh, merfolk, un slightly undead merfolk, lead you through and into the most gorgeous and elaborate set of catacombs you have ever seen. These underwater catacombs are full of jewels, ember, uh, opal, pearls, all of the things that you would expect from an underwater treasure trove. They line the walls. There are beautiful arches that have been meticulously carved over hundreds of years that have just make up the infrastructure of this underwater bustling city of Merfolk. 
And as you swim by, you receive many, 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 many a stare from people that have never seen, and they've never seen a mortal. They go, ah, oh. there are small, little, almost ghost, almost, uh, like undead, um, there are small undead merfolk that just stare up at you with slightly rotting eyes and some that have, again, slightly rotting tails, just swimming about, going about their daily businesses and not really caring, but most stop and stare as you swim past. The two merfolk you've been following lead you deep, deeper and deeper into the city where the walls get less polished, less clean, less elaborate, and more into the natural hewn catacombs of rock and volcanic tunnels. They lead you for a ways, then they stop and turn to you, Aurabelle. This is the end of our internal mapping. Anything you do beyond here, you do yourself. Hmm. All right. Uh, do we have any way to find our way back? My nervousness is this place seems pretty complicated and we're not necessarily the smartest bunch uh, to find our way back out. Mm. One of them takes uh, out something from their pack and they take out a small, again, uh, this one seems to be a larger, slightly, a slightly larger vial with glowing substance inside of it. And they hand it to you. Um, if you place this on the wall every uh, couple hundred meters or so, you should be able to follow the glow back. Leave it as some type of, um, I don't know, uh, leave it as a type of fish trail, fish crumb trail. Oh, oh, All right. Oh. We can do those that. things you have to breathe underwater. Can we get some of those as well? God, I'm sure case. you'll be fine. I'll be fine. <laughs> I know you'll be fine. I mean, what's the worst that's gonna happen? You'll be a ghost like me. I have a wonderful home. You can come home with me. <laughs> Is that guaranteed that I'll be a ghost? I mean, I don't know if it works. I don't know how that works, but we could find out. I, I do not want to become a ghost. Um, it, it's pretty it, fun, not gonna lie. I would like my life. It, this is a good life. Uh, and I have a long, very long one. I live longer than I think four of them. Um, can we do something to make sure that we do not run out of air? They kind of look at each other and, uh, well, um, we don't really, uh, here. I don't know if this will work, but you can try it. Um, these allow us to breathe air, so maybe they'll allow you to breathe water. And they take out four small uh, vials from their pack, two of each, and they hand them over. These are our only supply, so please don't use them unless you need to. Um, I'd like them back at some point if you you know come around here again. Oh, that reminds me, if you come around here again, um, ask for Julian, that's me. I, I would love to engage another sparring match and you know, sam have yeah, you guys sample some of the local cuisine. What? We gotta finish our sparring match. Yeah, yes, yes, we do. Okay, well, um, so I can't die. Bye. Julian, it was lovely to meet you, and we appreciate all your hail. It was lovely to meet all of you. Uh, so long. Such... Gotta get back to guard duty. And Julian will, what? Oh, no, I was, as, as we're turning around and walking away, I'm kind of like tapping, uh, uh, <clears throat> um, sores, and I'm like, this was a very weird interaction. <laughs> Hello, my thought his name was Julian. I'm gonna turn to Soros and I'm gonna hand him the vial of the glowing liquid. Here, you seem like the more responsible one. You wanna do I, this? I don't I don't I don't need it. And I pat the I pat the vials that I had left over from before. I'm no, handing you the glowing stuff so we can find our way back. We'll have to oh, put okay. it on the wall occasionally. So yes. I hold it, look at it. Okay. All right. Thank you, Soros. Uh, so uh, as we're standing here, is there like multiple ways we can go or is it just one path that we're following? Uh, so there seems to be just one path that leads off into darkness immediately in front of you. All right. Um, all right. Uh, any suggestions? Just keep going, I guess. This, this just seems keeps to me the way of going. 
All right. Uh, you should continue. Here. Here. And I'm going to turn to um, Finnegan and I'm going to cast light ah! on his rapier, I guess. Uh, lead on. You got I the light. Have the power! <clears throat> From the head a bit. Is my uh, is uh, my dark vision is my dark vision able to penetrate the darkness down here? It's not magical darkness, um, so you can see a little bit more. The fact that it trails off in the darkness is mainly because you're just it's so far away and there's no light source. Uh, and now Got there it. is a light source, so you can see farther than anybody without dark vision. Um, and actually, you can see, yeah, but you can't really see anything past the edge okay. of the light being cast. I mean, I think I'll, I'll, I'll let Finnegan continue to go ahead. I know I have a dark vision. I also have dark vision. Okay. Okay. So we all do. I do not. Everybody <laughs> yeah, except no. Ghosty Girl has dark vision. Well, my dark vision friends don't really need the light. <laughs> That's fine. I still love having the light on my rapier, so I'm not going to make any comments about how I could see already. And I'm going to hold it out in front of me, and I'm going to do my vertical swim with my little legs kicking in the back. Wait. Oh, okay. Would this so kind of you... like be the laser light on the ground for you? No. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Well, I'm super that. excited that I'm already holding it. <laughs> All right. You and your little light, uh, your light happy party continue down. Uh, and you continue along this passageway about 400 feet. And then you find a, a split. And this is probably, you could guess why the, um, the merfolk did not continue any farther. Because one split goes directly vertical and one split heads directly uh down, down. The other vertical. The other vertical. Yep. The other vertical. <laughs> vertical up, vertical down. Which, which way do we go? I don't. I don't know. Um. Or a bell. But... I was swimming upwards. I don't All wait right. for them. Oh, I follow. Fair enough. All right. Uh, <laughs> I guess it I don't... has been decided. Yeah, I don't think it's good to split up. Okay. Never I mean, if they were on the surface, <laughs> then going up makes sense, right? I mean, yeah. Yeah. Seems reasonable. Let's do it. All right. You swim up, and the farther and farther you swim up this passageway, the narrower and narrower it gets, until as you are swimming, if you put out your hands more than a foot into each side, you will be touching the wall. And you swim, and you swim, and this this tube becomes smaller and smaller, and then soars. You're leaving the pack. You suddenly burst through the water and start breathing immediately clean air. Well, clean's an interesting statement. You are breathing air, um, but this air seems to glow very, very softly with a faint yellow, uh, with faint yellow particles around the chamber am i am i still swimming or am i somewhere where i can stand up uh you are swimming and you are okay. still swimming just head poking out of this tunnel that is heading still vertical for a slight bit there's just now yellow particles of air in the air hmm. and you can breathe air now okay so it's but it's still part of the tunnel mm-hmm Okay, can I? Hmm. Does that mean I can't go up further? Without, you could like, you could start climbing up further. Against... Yeah, okay. it's narrow enough I'm, that you okay, could I'll, probably. I'm gonna... What? I'm gonna start to climb. Okay, make an athletic check for me. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming, that swimming, is going swimming. Twenty-three. Okay, you're pretty easily to chimney your way up this uh, this passageway, and you don't have to chimney long. You have to go about thirty-ish feet before you enter a small. Uh, cavern that you can see is populated by more and more of these slight, faintly glowing yellow spores around this area. There are rocks, and along the walls you can see that there are cracks that have been filled with dark, dark black obsidian. So I'll wait for the others to climb up behind me. Mm -hmm. I have climbing speed. Oh, you can climb. So I just climb. Yes, I can climb 20 feet. You can climb. At, at a time. Yeah. <laughs> how f And how far up is it once I break the surface? It's a 30 foot climb. It's 30 feet. Um... Mm -hmm. Bing, bing. If you're looking, if you can use Misty Step, I would rule that you can do it. 
I was actually looking at that. I mean, it would cost me a spell slot, but um, I get to the thing and I don't know that I could climb it. So I, I'm going to try mm -hmm. and see what if in it. But if I start to slide back down, I'll just miss the step. Cool. Uh, make an athletics check to see how far slash if at all you get up this thing. Athletics. Actually, I have a decent athletics. Hey. John, because Brian is. Brian is always planning something nefarious. You're correct. That would I don't be know a, what you're talking about. <sighs> that would be a 15. Okay. You can get um about two thirds ish out of the way of the tunnel. Um almost there. You're like you're so close. Um if either someone climbs down and helps you the rest of the way, they could do that pretty easily, or you can miss you step up. Oh, just bonus action, Misty Step. Okay. Up. Step to the surface and just kind of pop up. Bonk. Just out of curiosity, mm -hmm. in my exploration of the island, is there anything that I recognize in regards to these particles and these spores? Make a nature check. Anything else? Yeah, make a nature check, and then I'm going to pop over to Paige, and then I'll pop back to you. Paige? Okay. Uh, I'm just going to kind of look up and be like, well, I'll try, but not well known for climbing. Um, Can ghosts float? No, we float 10 feet off the ground and anything farther than 10 feet and we just fall to whatever distance. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. So, no, I can't fly. Ah. No fly for me and I roll the five. Yeah. So I don't think I'm getting up. So just from in the hole. Oh. Help. Help. <gasps> uh, anybody have any rope? I don't think I'm going to make it up here on my own. I through your hands. Hmm? Turn wouldn't the rope just pass through your hands? Yeah, <laughs> fat <laughs> kind of. I, I I just turn around on the wall. Oh my! And start climbing down. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like a fucking and spider. Then, <laughs> and then I will uh, <sighs> turn back around when I get to her, and I will um like look back and like grab on. Oh, you're a hero. Thank you. And I, I was screaming, you don't want anything. So <laughs> I'll climb up. All right. Again. You're able to climb up pretty well, very easily without uh, any checks. And you get into this uh, small area. I'm, we're going to pop back to Brian for his nature check on the spores. Brian. That would be a natural 20 for a 22. Hey! Ooh. Natural 20! We're rolling so well for this. Why can't we do this in our other shows? <laughs> yeah, know, right? you guys are doing so well. <laughs> Uh, except mean, for Paige I've a couple, couple and Krista. Um, we have okay. rolled no nat ones thus far. That's I, no, I did. Right. I, I did roll one. You did on my oh, initiative. Did? On my initiative. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Ah. Okay. Well. Uh, so, yeah, Brian, with your uh, with your exploration of the island, you would have rec noticed and recognized that every single evening at dusk. Uh, and actually also Paige would have known this, so thank you for reminding me. Every single evening at dusk, the roots of the large tree that the cultists have claimed as staken their claim emanate these small yellow spores into the air. Do they do anything when you breathe them? Mm, have you stayed along long enough to, around long enough to find out? Um... I would argue yes, because I was studying the sap when you guys, when they walked up to me. Okay. You're going to give me a chance at it? Yeah, roll. yeah, I'll let you do it. Uh, roll, roll, a knowledge, roll a knowledge history check and or an okay. arcana check, and that'll determine how much I tell you. Okay, let's see which one's better. No, 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 knowledge. Oh, they're the same. Yeah, they're both intelligence. That would be a big seven. Ah, well, um, you don't remember them doing anything that funky to you? That being said, if they did and it wiped your memory, you wouldn't remember it. But you don't remember <laughs> it. There's that. Okay, so I continue to explore the chamber for anything else interesting. Great. As you explore the chamber, you see that this uh, large chamber narrows down again to a small uh, passageway with stairs, very cleanly carved stone stairs that start to climb up a passageway that leads upwards. I look back towards Finnegan. Finnegan. Eh? Stairs. 
I think you should Sam. check that out. Okay. I think you should check that out. I'm going to stay over here safe. <laughs> stairs, stairs, walking up the stairs. Are you going to walk up the stairs singing that? Yes. Oh, goodness. Okay. You walk up the stairs, and you sing a little song, and you walk up the stairs, and you walk for, like, 15 minutes, um, and then at one point you see another stairway that leads Ooh, down. Minutes. 15 minutes. It's a long ass. Okay. After a couple of minutes, I start to follow. Okay. There's I would as well. stairs. Yeah. Walking Listening the to the stairs. singing. You hear this echo as, downward. As we do that, I will, I will re as we're walking up the stairs, I will pull and grab my flagon that's attached to my hip <laughs> that I keep on my There's belt loop. Stairs. And I pull out a flask and I, or a, a, a closed flask and I, and I fill it and, I, we're, and we're just kind of walking up behind. Okay. Uh, you're pretty easily to walk up these stairs. Um, so you make your way up the stairs, walking up the stairs, drinking a little ale, continuing on your way. Um, and you go. And you walk up for about 15 minutes. And Finnegan, you notice first that there is another passageway that connects with yours. And then you walk a couple more minutes and there's another passageway that connects with yours from the left. And more and more passageways seem to be feeding into this. And you would be able to know and... At this point, probably everybody's more or less caught up to you because you're, you know, taking your sweet time and everybody's hearing your voice like a beacon as you walk up the stairs. Um, you could get the sense that anybody that was trying to move downward into the uh, into these into this rock would have a very very hard time. But anyone working their way upwards, it seems to be incredibly easy. Uh, and as you start to see about three or four more passageways join you, you see a large, gnarled piece of wood, almost like a root, sticking out of the side of one of these staircases. Huh. And you start to follow that as you circle upwards. I wonder if that's important. Stairs, <laughs> stairs, walking up the stairs. Stairs, hey, stairs. Hey guys, there's a lot of stairs. Yes, I, I think I, these are. are not naturally occurring. As they have been uh, carved, I would I would agree. This also, is... there's a root up here. A big a one. Does the root continue? Hmm. Is it like built into the stairs? Like the stairs were built uh, specifically around the root? It is, yes. Question about the big tree. Mm -hmm. The roots and the tree itself, does it look different from the other trees that I would know if this is coming from the big tree? I'm assuming it probably is, but... Uh, yes. It is incredibly easy to tell. There is no way any other tree could have a root this deep underground. Right. Great. And also, this tree is <laughs> literally... Em these roots are emanating yellow, glowing yellow spores that you only ever see Fair. emanating out of the other roots. Okay, so the rest of the trees in that forest don't do the same thing. Nope. Cool. It's just the one. Uh, I suddenly stop walking up the stairs and I get distracted with the spores until everyone catches up because I'm trying to touch all of them. <laughs> I I resisted the urge for a long time and now I cannot anymore. All right. Grabbing at spores. Uh, you all... As we yep. catch up. Yep, as you catch up, you see Finnegan just... <laughs> it's like a cat with a laser pointer, except it's a fox with spores that glow. <laughs> I'm just going to walk past him and keep going up. Yeah. <laughs> like, I am all right. completely ignoring him. <laughs> Good move. I shake my head as I pass him. Smart move. All right. You guys, uh, you guys walk like another minute, and then you hear stairs, <laughs> stairs, walking up the stairs. Uh, is anybody going Catch ahead, or are you all just going lights. as a group besides Jesse? No, we're going to continue past mm. him, and we'll just... Keep the rest on. of us will, will, will stay fairly close to each other. Okay. Yeah, we'll stay yeah. fairly close. Well, as you stay close, um, Soars and uh, Aurabelle, you would notice that as you get further and further up, you get the air starts to get uh, more and more clean, more and more fresh. And you can tell that you are nearing some sort of surface area where you break into the, into the air. I kind of pause. I don't know where this is going to spit us up, and if we are near the tree, and all those unfriendly fellows are around, 
I don't know if we just want to pop up and say hi. Do we want to keep going? Where? What if we run into them? Well, are we going to find your device? I don't know. I thought it was supposed to be under the water, but we seem to be getting back to the surface. I mean, we could do something different. I mean, maybe instead of finding whatever device they're going for, we stop them at the root, but I don't know. There's four of us and a lot of them. Well, we could turn back, but then we won't know. That's fair. Well, all right. Is anybody confident that they could maybe take a look without being seen? And I, I, my immediate thought goes to Finnegan, and then I hear him singing. I'm like, maybe Catching not. Catching little Finnegan. spores as I'm walking up the stairs. As I hear I, this, I, I like, just turn around and I'm like, Shh. did you? Uh... All right. Well. Shh. Okay. Uh, whoever. Whoever feels like they uh, maybe can figure out what it is the quietest maybe should go ahead a little bit and the rest of us follow behind. Oh, I ahead. can be very quiet. Oh, goodness. And I look at you and I said, shh. 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 And I, I, I look back at, um, at, uh, or a bell. I, I mean, I, I can do some things and make myself not seen. Good point. Uh, you know what? I I can do that as well. I forgot. Uh, and <laughs> so I hold up my hand. Yeah. Hold up. Hold on a second. Mm -hmm. And I blink, and another version of me pops out. There's Ooh. two of me. Ooh. And then one of them starts walking up the stairs. And then as soon as it gets about 25 feet ahead of me, I start following. What are you but doing? I keep, the, uh, I keep the echo He's of a myself. He's ghost, too. I keep, I keep the echo of myself 25 feet ahead of can me. Can you see through your echo? Yes, I can. Okay. You send your echo, quacking up the stairs. Uh, and as you start following behind, seeing out of, seeing double, I guess, out of the eyes and ears of your echo, you start to see that um, as you walk about four or 500 feet farther up the passage, this passage levels out into a large, large cavern, in the center of which is a table, on top of which is the revolutionary girl, lying with arcane runes, necromantic sigils, and all sorts of miscellaneous things painted across her body in a very dark brown reddish substance. Standing at the foot of this table, Back to you is someone you would know as the cultist leader. They're so the chanting faintly, making sigils, writing things in a book, going around, painting something on this dead body, going back to their book. The real version of me turns back to the others. And without much emotion, they've got the girl up there. The body? The one they that took. Girl? Apparently, they're doing something to her. What could they be doing? I think we should find out. And I turn and start walking up the stairs. All right. But my, uh, I, 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 I keep my, keep my echo kind of, kind of held back, and I'll catch up with my echo. You turn and walk up the stairs until you catch up with your echo, uh, and as you catch up, you can peer out from the side of a wall that leads into this large chamber, and you see the exact same site, except this ritual seems to be further along. You see s sparks of magic start to light up, and you see one small prick of it fly into the air and meet at a point in the top of the ceiling. And as you watch for another five seconds, a second one flicks up to the top of the ceiling. Having seen the ruins of the fortress, is there any similarity to the ruins they're using here? Incredibly, yes. They're incredibly similar. So, me and my Echo start heading in different directions and kind of slowly start circling around, allow the others to come up the stairs. Are you going to enter the room in stealth? Yes. Okay, roll stealth. 
Yes, I also want to be incredibly stealthy from here on forward. So Anybody that's entering the room, roll stealth. No noise. It's gonna be, I will do the, I'm at disadvantage, but I still managed a 14. Okay, 14. I shall try. Ooh, ooh. I have a 20. I... Oh, go ahead. 23. Ooh, nice. I rolled the worst I've rolled this whole time. Ah. Uh? I have to check, double check something. Okay. Oh, yeah, no, it's it's a 17. Okay. Six. Oh, my. Okay, well. Oh, no. Soars enters, splits up with his echo, and walk around the side of the room. Uh, oh, my. Anna walks up, follows the echo along the left side of the room. Finnegan stands up and starts following Soars on the other side of the room. And Aurabelle walks up the stairs, sees what's going on, and cannot resist a shout. Oh my! Everybody please roll initiative. Uh, this is going to be fast and furious. 22 little... for initiative. Okay. <coughs> Six. Oh I'll my. Last. So many sixes. I'm caught off guard. So many sixes. I have a 15. 15? Ooh, that's going to be a 21 for me. All right, I'm rolling initiative for dude, bro. Oh, my. Dude, bro. What's dude, bro doing? Remember oh. the last dude, bro, you faced off against Paige? Yeah, I do remember dude, bro. Not that same dude, bro. Don't worry. Um, Okay, so. Different dude, bro. Right. Thanks. Yep. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Finnegan. I'm sure this one will be nicer. You hear Orabel exclaim, in panic, and you know that this is, your, this is your only chance to move before the last strings of light that keep flicking up to the air finish this ritual, and whatever is about to be done cannot be undone. It's your turn. Are you, what are you going for? Yep, Finnegan. Oh, I'm going for a stabby stab. Stabby stab! Sneak attack time. I lunge forward after hearing the oh my. I lunge forward trying to do it before they turn around, and I go straight for the stab with the rapier. Okay. Uh... Roll for it. I was going to say roll with advantage, but you, uh, actually, you are hidden, so go for it. Roll for advantage. Yay! Stab him! And if you hit, sneak attack. Oh, man. Does a 16 hit? Yeah, that's going to hit. Roll for damage. Yes! Yes! Oh, that's, ooh, that's not bad. Okay, okay, so we got... Uh, 10 for regular damage plus 13 points of sneak attack. So 23. Oh my, okay. Amazing, sick. You carve and you stab straight through, literally through this cultist leader's shoulder. And in the back you see that your rapier is covered in thick, viscous, dark red blood. And you pull it back out. Uh, oh my. Soros, it's your turn. So my um, Echo will run up mm -hmm. and make attacks while I personally stay back. Okay. So Echo's going to run up, and I'm going to use Great Weapon Mastery. Yeah. Hit. Hopefully. And that is going to be a 21. That's totally going to hit. Oh, my gosh. Roll for damage. Yeah. You get a plus 10 from Great Weapon Master, right? Yep. Sick. And that's going to be 24 total. Okay. Ooh, oh, I get love the dude, this. Bro. My. Get him. Get him. Yes. Well, uh, how do you want to do this? <laughs> oh. um, my that echo will run quick. up. Yep, it was supposed to be just quick. Cleave, cleave onto his shoulder, and the sword will pass all the way through his chest and nearly cleaving him diagonally across, but will stop just short. All right. The little flapping pieces. Th this happened just as Finnegan pulled his sword out. Yep. <laughs> and you watch as and this. I turn towards Finnegan and say, "That's why I don't spar." <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, the rest of you watch as this body starts to fall apart to the sides, and as the two halves of this cultist leader hit the floor, um, you feel the energy in the room start to shift and turn and. The last spark of light that was around surrounding this table shoots up, hits the point in the ceiling, and then <laughs> light shatters down all around you. And this dark magic starts to swirl, swirl, swirl around the body. 
of the dead girl. And then there's dark magic swirling. Huh? Some dark magic swirling. Uh, and then Would have been you all pass out. Early, you go like unconscious. <laughs> no, uh, you go unconscious. Can I stab the darkness? No, you can. You cannot stab the darkness. You go unconscious <laughs> is what happens, and you wake okay. up in the same room. Hours later, no ho- scars on your body, nothing else heard about you, just the rotting corpse of a dead cultist leader and an empty table. And that's where we're going to end the one shot. Yay! For those of you who what? know what happens after this, uh, you know what happens after this. For those of you who don't know. That's me. Uh, watch you the can find out. No. I can find out. You could watch out. Uh, you could watch the Quiet Gear stream and find out. What yeah. Happens. Hey, maybe it's fun to watch it in this order. Thank you so much for that being be here. That'd be thank really you. interesting. That was fun. Yes. So yes, thank you thank so you much to all coming. of the wonderful players. Thank you for stabbing people so well. Uh, thank you so much to everybody in the audience. Uh, we really, really appreciate all of you being here and being in chat and hanging out with us. So thank you. Yes, I know we absolutely. had uh, a lot of great people in here. We had Ed, Echo Knight and James and a couple other really great people that I haven't seen around. So welcome. We hope you uh, stick around for some really more fun content uh, later and in the future. Um, and absolutely. Here, as soon as we're done here, I am going to start streaming uh, my stream. Um, we're going to stop the stream, and then we'll restart a new stream. Yep. Um, so she can reset. Yep. Um, and then I will be playing some Diablo three. Really yep. quick for 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 Arctic. Yeah. Yes, you playing the Echo Knight inspired me to play that one because it's a really cool character class. And That's once, so once, sick. Once you were playing it, it made me look up look 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 him up and kind of figure out what he does. It's a cool. It's like it's an awesome character. It really is. He's, Finnegan wants to spar with you even more now. <laughs> not less. <laughs> that did not help as two it, of them. something to dissuade him. The other right. thing is, yeah. don't forget to go check out the dice we were rolling with. Yes, we were all rolling with Misty Mountain Gaming dice. They make gorgeous, amazing dice. We also, don't we have a Misty Mountain Gaming code for 15% off? We do. Uh, do we know what the code is? I... I'm sure it will appear on our Discord if we don't keep have an it yet. eye on the Discord, folks. Keep an eye, and out. you can get the code. Um, yeah, that's it. So, uh, you guys are all wonderful. I'm Rose. I was your DM. If you want to see me DM more shit, uh, oops, I go oh, down. No. Uh, mm, if you want to see me DM Creator more Clash. things, <laughs> uh, we're gonna be starting Creator Clash next week, starting it up again. So every single Sunday, I'm gonna DM a short, uh, level one to level three at max mini series slash adventure slash battle royale with Creator Small Across the Space. So catch us there. Kristen is amazing. She does all of our production. She also does all of our tech, and we love her. And she plays Jezo, Paige. She played uh, today our wonderful Oravel. Paige is also our COO, and she plays Emiliana and does a bunch of really great things with editing. Jesse, we love Jesse. Jesse played Finnegan, our wonderful wet fox. Um, and Jesse plays Giraz on the show. And Brian, Brian is our lead writer. We love him. He's amazing. Thank you so much for being here, Brian. Uh, and Brian plays Azathal on the show. And today he played our wonderful Swords. Anything else any of you guys want to say, or shall we just sign off? Sign off and I'll see you guys great in Peter. just a few so for Diablo. Everyone. Stick around Di- for Christmas Diablo, Diablo stream. 3. Yep, stick around. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.